This is what happens if you trade a low quality setup. And this is what happens if you trade a high quality setup. But what exactly is the difference between the two? Because this is hands down the difference between a trader that makes money and not make money. If we look at the stats right here, we can clearly see there's a massive difference in the winners versus losers. So here we have a quality trade setup, a 66% win rate. Keep in mind, this is a two to one reward to risk. Versus a poor setup, we have a 22% win rate. That's just not one trader, here's another trader coming up with a good win rate, 80% win rate, versus a poor zone, 40% win rate. Here's another trader, a good quality setup versus a poor setup. Good, 66%, a poor setup, 44%. And not only that, the one I just had last week, talking about their trade reviews, a good quality trade setup, 12 wins, five losses, versus a poor setup, three wins, six losses. So you can clearly see that there's a difference between our winning setups versus our losing setups. And I'm here today to share with you what exactly that is so that you can start making money consistently. Been traveling and trading around the world and helping traders directly been doing this for over 10 years. Okay, so you are in the right spot. So let's get started. I appreciate if you guys like the video, subscribe. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me in the comments below or on social media at Moneyball Austin. Okay, so let's get started. What exactly is a high probability quality zone? Okay, and time and time again, every zone has these common things. And this is going to start, it doesn't matter if it's the higher time frame or lower time frame. Every zone, number one, hands down the most important concept right here. Never mind fresh versus tested, how far prices go, what does it accomplish? Uh, what about the higher time frame, multiple time frame? No, none of that matters if we don't have a strong imbalance. And so this is why the whole concept of supply and demand is to identify where a large stack of buyers or sellers is. And if there's a large stack of buyers or sellers stepping into the market, do you think that prices are going to move like slowly grinding or in a very strong fashion? They're going to move in a very strong fashion. So that's why the number one thing hands down right away is that price moves two to one. The uh, imbalance equals two to one. Not only that, this happens within the first one to three candlesticks, okay? This is so important. I want prices to move within two to one, the size of the zone within the first one to three candlesticks. If it takes six or seven candlesticks, I don't want to see you trading at it, okay? So an example of this, how do we measure a two to one imbalance? Let's talk about that, okay? Because here we have a demand zone right here or sorry, supply, right up here. This is our supply zone, but what do I mean by imbalance? Okay, so we're going to draw out the base, and the base is a total of 1,700 points, okay? The imbalance candlesticks, the first one to three candlesticks that leave in a strong fashion, this candlestick and this candlestick, all right? Those candlesticks, I need prices to go at least two times the size of the base. So I need to see it go at least like 32 or 3400 within the first one to three candlesticks. Okay, so in this case, within the first one to three candlesticks, it's gone over 6500 points. That is over three to one the size of the base. That's exactly what I want to see. If we look over here, at this example, this is something I do with traders in the program. After each lesson, I get them to hand in homework that lets me know that they understand how to identify and draw out strong, quality, tradable supply and demand zones. The whole concept starts with this. Okay, so this is why it's important before they go on to each lesson that they understand it. Okay, and so right away, this was a trader thinking that this was a demand zone. Oh, that's a that's a demand zone. But look how weak the imbalance is. It took over six candlesticks to go at least two to one. That's not a zone that I want to use. OK, so when we're drawing out these supply and demand zones, it's important that we have these strong imbalances that go at least two to one. So let's move on to the second thing. We're going to go over several examples and trade reviews. And we're going to talk about why that's a good quality trade setup. But we go, first got to talk about what exactly is a quality setup? These are the common things and we're going to talk about how to actually use it in your system, okay? But hands down, if you have these top two things, 
you are smooth sailing, okay? The second most important thing, okay? Every trade that I take is going to have this, okay? Same thing with number one. The second most important thing that I must have is I need the zone to be tradable. And in order for a zone to be considered tradable, it needs to remove an opposing zone and or break trend lines, okay? So we're going to write this out. I could get into a whole spiel about this and I'm going to talk about it because it's important because there's a difference between an opposing zone being removed versus an opposing pivot point zone, okay? And they're two different things because the higher time frame, when we're always looking at a higher time frame, the higher time frame is used for a different purpose versus the lower time frame, okay? But these two things are hands down the most important that both of them will have in common, okay? So when it comes to breaks a momentum line or removes opposing zone, we typically want this. I'm, I'm also going to write this. This is going to happen within the first one to three three, I'm going to say four candles. If it takes longer than one to four candlesticks to break a momentum line or remove the opposing zone, then it's not a zone that I want to trade. Okay. We need to make sure that these zones actually accomplish something. Okay. So this is why it's so important that for the first one to four candlesticks, we not only go two to one, but we also remove an opposing zone or break momentum line. So in this case, for this move to the downside, we are removing this area of demand, okay? So it's a clear structured area that, we're, that we are removing, okay? So this right here, those two things, that makes a quality zone. So when prices arrive back into that zone, I'm not going to sell it straight up, okay? We'll talk about that but that gives me the ability to start looking for selling opportunities. Okay, very important that traders understand that. We aren't just trading at decent little zones or zones that somewhat have a decent imbalance. No, we wanna make sure that these, these zones are actually accomplishing something. So if we look at this trader over here, uh, let's see, let's look at this one for an example. So this is a zone that this guy was calling out. This guy was calling this a supply zone. He's not wrong. It's a rally based drop. He is correct. It's got a strong two to one imbalance, but it never removed an opposing zone. So it's not a zone that I would want to use. Okay. You understand what I mean? This little supply zone, it never removed an opposing zone. Yes, it did have a two to one imbalance, but it didn't remove an opposing zone or break upward trend lines. So it is not a tradable zone. Okay. I don't want to use it. So if we look at, I think his next homework I got him to hand in was actually really nice. And so if we look at this next homework, look at this, all right? Drop base drop supply zone, very strong imbalance. Not only that, it's gone two to one within the first one to three candlesticks. By the time here, it's gone over like four to one, but look what it removed to the left. It removed clear structure. This is a supply zone that I want to use, okay? Same thing with this zone and same thing with this zone down here, this demand, okay? That, that is extremely important. Look at the imbalance to the upside. It's breaking downward trend line, okay? That's what I want to see in these zones. So what exactly does it look like in a trade setup? Well, let's talk about that because there are multiple little things that make a good zone, okay? Um, is it inside higher time frame zone? What is the quality of the higher time frame zone? What about the lower time frame structure? What about how much time it took to come back? What about is it fresh? What about the time of the arrival? How is the arrival? There's so many little things that go into the setup, but bottom line, these are going to be the most important. So let's go over here to the trade review tab. Where where was this? Okay, let's look at Ty Tyson. I'm, I'm, we're going to be talking about your trade review. Okay. So this is what Tyson was doing. He started off with this higher time frame, And if we look at this, prices were coming back into a, a higher time frame demand zone over here, okay? So this was his demand. Notice again, here's his demand, imbalance over two to one, check. Not only that, look, look at the imbalance. 
it removed opposing zones and would have broken downward trend line. So we're gonna go remove slash momentum line. Check, all right? It didn't take 10 candlesticks. It didn't take eight candlesticks. It took three, maximum four candlesticks. In fact, everything was accomplished in one candlestick. That's what I wanna use, okay? Those are zones I wanna use. But notice, this is a higher time frame. I am not just blindly going to go off and buy this as a demand. I'm not going to have a pending order there sitting there for when prices come back, you know, a month later. That's one of the stupidest things that you could do. So instead, I understand when prices are coming back into my higher time frame demand zone over here, I can look for buying opportunities, but I understand the trend is going to be in a downtrend. So I have to look for confirmation, right? I want to see price starting to turn inside out. And that's exactly what he did. So he went down to his lower time frame, And if we look over here, this is when price, this is his higher time frame over here to the left. So prices came into it. Here is his demand zone. Okay. Here we have lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. And then what do you notice here? Very strong move to the upside. What is this zone accomplishing? If we look at this demand zone, all right? If that is our demand zone, what is that quality of the zone? Once again, two to one within the first three candlesticks, okay? Not only that, it's removed an opposing zone which is this area, it's removed that opposing pivot point zone, pivot point. It's not just a little continuation pattern. I am not using that, all right? So there's different little variables that you have to use on a higher time frame versus a lower time frame. On a lower time frame like this, it has to be a pivot point. It has to be a pivot point being removed. It's not a little continuation pattern being removed. It's a pivot point. Hands down, extremely important, okay? This is why I'm always going like this in my trades, okay? And not little continuation patterns. So we have two to one, we remove the opposing zone and we broke, I'm just gonna go broke momentum line, all right? That is what I like. He is buying the pullback over here and he is laughing to the bank. <laughs> yeah, he's laughing to the bank, okay? That's what he was doing. But that is little things that make a good quality setup, okay? And so when we go to a chart, it's important. Let's look at uh, oil. Oil is another one, okay? We start on our higher time frame, okay? It doesn't matter the time frame sequence that you're looking at. It's the same thing. When it comes to drawing out my zones, this supply zone up here. And by the way, if you're like, hey, I don't know how to draw supply and demand zones. I got you covered. There will be a video in the description of this video talking about how to identify and draw supply and demand zones. Okay, you're like, hey, I want to learn your whole trading strategy. I have an hour and a half long video breaking down everything I can. Here I'm talking about the top two things that are the most important that if you don't ever implement into your system, you're never going to make money with this system. Okay? It's getting to the point where like I'm sitting there freaking out in a chair thinking, why are these guys you know, watching these videos and they send me a trade review and they're not implementing this. It drives me crazy. Okay. You need prices to go at least two to one. Okay. So this imbalance very strong within the first two candlesticks, it's gone two to one. It's removed the opposing zone. Okay. We're in a downtrend. Okay. That's an area that I want to look for selling opportunities. And then once prices come back into that area of higher time frame. It's the same damn thing on my entry time frame, man. So we have our entry time frame. We are removing pivot point zones. We are breaking trend lines within the first one to three candlesticks. Okay. And look at the imbalance. Look, the the opposing pivot point zone on a lower time frame is being removed. It's going at least two to one the size of the base within the first one to three candlesticks and momentum lines are being broken within the first one to three candlesticks. If this ain't happening within the first one to three, maximum four, then I am never going to trade at the zone. I'll show you the most recent trade I took today in gold. This was a gold setup. Once again, guys, 
higher time frame demand. Look at that base. I want you to look at the imbalance, okay? Going over two to one within the first one, within the first one to three candlesticks, it's removed opposing zones, so it's a tradable zone. So once prices come back into my zone, I can look for buying opportunities. I go down to my lower time frame zone and I saw this, okay? I saw lower low, lower high, lower low. This imbalance right here, over two to one the size of the base, it's broken that downward structure, it's removed the opposing pivot point zone now, okay? Every time, and I enter here, I had my take profit at two to one, I moved my stop to just below break even, I was stopped out. That's going to happen. But time and time again, when I go back and look at these, you know, traders where I'm doing these one-on-ones, look, it's really important. What's the difference between a trending market versus a counter trend market? Well, it's pretty important to know what the difference between a good setup is, okay? What's the difference between the reversal patterns versus a continuation, okay? But time and time again, these are the stats that people keep coming back to me. This trader, strong imbalance versus poor imbalance, okay? 80% win rate versus a 40%. It's night and day difference. This is the difference between a trader that is, as in the quality of the setup, that is the difference, okay? Versus a trader that makes money and not make money. It's a very thin line between a trader that makes money consistently and decides to be a gambler. But at the end of the day, the decision is yours. But these are things that every zone must have. How far, there's little things like, is it fresh versus tested? On lower time frame zones, it has to be fresh. It has to be fresh. On a higher time frame zone, it's less important that the zone is fresh. Okay, but if you're trading counter trend, you definitely don't want to be trading a tested higher time frame zone in a counter trend market, right? Then you start factoring in, well, what about the arrival? Well, what about how far did prices go before it returned? How long did it take as in time? Should you really be trading a one hour zone that took, you know, a week to come back? Is that really a smart idea? What about, should you really be buying the Japanese yen when it's just in a horrible downtrend? Like there's people trying to swing short this position on New Zealand yen, like these yen pairs, they're trying to swing short this thing. Why are you trying to swing short the yen? You know, it's the worst currency. It's just going nothing but up this New Zealand yen. It's the same thing for all these currencies. So why would you be trying to trade against a trend like that, trying to call a four hour top? projected to be in a trade like that for weeks on end. So there's so many little things that I could get into that I've got into in different videos, but hands down, if you don't implement those rules, to, then you're not going to do well. Okay. Every lower time frame zone is going to have that two to one imbalance and it's going to remove at the opposing pivot point zone and break momentum line. If I only have two out of the three or one out of the three, I'm not taking it. Okay. The higher time frame could be different. But once again, it has to have a two to one imbalance um, and it needs to remove an opposing zone. It doesn't might not need to be an opposing pivot point zone, but it has to be an opposing zone. So many things I wish I could get into. There are levels to this stuff, absolute levels. So if you guys would actually like my direct help and you want to work with me directly, check it out, moneyballtraining.com. That will be in the description below where we can start working directly one-on-one -on -one, and I can take you through the whole program of where the goal is to create consistently profitable traders in 90 days or less. All right, this is something I do with all the traders. So check it out. That will be in the description below. Once again, I appreciate if you guys like the video, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.